Yeah, hi everyone. I'm going to present my our work, DPIM, Deep Iterative Matching for 6D Object Pulse Estimation. I'm Yi Li, and this work was done in collaborating with Gu Wang and Professor Xiang Yang Ji from Tsinghua University, Yu Xiang and Professor Dieter Fox from University of Washington and Media Research. Okay. This problem we are interested. The, the problem we are interested in is 6D object pose estimation. Assuming we have an object in 3D space by using a camera, we can obtain the appearance of the object from a specific viewpoint. Okay. From a specific viewpoint, and uh, in 6D object pulse estimation task, we want to use this image to retrieve the 3D location and the 3D orientation of, of the object relative to the camera. 6D object pulse estimation can be used in many real-world applications. For instance, in a ro robot manipulation task, 6D object poses provide useful information for grasping and motion planning. In an augmented reality application, 6D object process estimation enables virtual interaction between humans and objects. There are many recent papers having excellent performance on this task by using not only RGB images, but also depth images. However, compared to regular RGB cameras, depth cameras have limitations with respect to the resolution, field of view, frame rate, and limited depth range, making it very difficult to use in various settings. Additional limitations are outdoor scenarios, detecting small, thin, transparent, or fast-moving objects. There are several recent techniques using RGB-only images for object pose estimation, which can avoid such drawbacks caused by depth cameras. They either use feature matching or template matching. Post refinement is widely used to improve the post accuracy. When depth images are available, most methods use the iterative closest points algorithm, SAP, to refine their process. For RGB-only methods, given an initial post estimate, a synthetic RGB image can be rendered and used to match against the target input image. However, on the line model data set, the 60 pulse accuracy of methods using RGB only methods images can be more than 35% lower than the, than the accuracy of RGB based methods. This gap also exists on other data sets. We claim that the bottleneck of RGB based methods was that RGB based methods did not have a powerful refinement which is comparable to the ICP. When our method is used to refine pulse estimates, we found the gap is greatly narrowed, and the RGB-based methods is able to be competitive to those using depth images. Here we propose DeepIM, a neural network-based pulse refinement technique, which iteratively refines 60 pulses using only RGB images. Let's go through the framework first. Let's assume we have a 3D model of the object we are trying to locate by in an image, along with an initial pulse estimate denoted as pulse zero, which can be obtained from other methods. First, we can use the pulse zero and the 3D model to render an image that shows what the object will look like on the pulse zero. Then we input the rendered image and the observed image to our network and get a prediction that pulse that post zero, which represents the, an estimate for the transformation from post zero to the, to the correct post of the object. This estimated transformation can be used to update post zero to post one, which can be expected to be closer to the ground truth post. We can now iterate through this process, just like in the first step. Post one can be used to generate a rendered image image feed to the network, and the network predicts another transformation. And the DPM uses this new transformation to update post one again. This update can be repeated during training and testing for a desired number of times, which we call it iterative training and testing. Next, I will provide more details on the structure of the matching network.
The network takes four images as input. They observe the image and an initial object and an object object bounding box mask along with the rendered image and mask. We choose FlowNet simple for the, as the back network's backbone structure. After 11 count layers from FlowNet simple, we continue with two fully connected layers and two regressors to predict the translation and rotation. We also add additional branches to predict the opt optical flow and object masks during training. The representation and coordinate frame used for the relative SEC post transformation is important to the performance of the network. Our goal is to choose a representation such that the network outputs are consistent with the network outputs are consistent with operations in the 2D images, such as translation, scaling, and rotation. Importantly, the transformation estimated by the network should be independent of the specific object being matched. Let's talk about the representation of rotation first. The camera frame of reference is the most common choice being used, as shown in the picture. This rotation represents the object rotates around the camera, or equivalently, the camera rotates around the object. Now we look at the animation on the right. Assuming that the green rectangle represents the object we want to move, the numbers represent the transformation vector we have the z-axis is pointing into the image. As you can see, the rotation around the z-axis also generates an object translation in the image space. If the network only wants to rotate the object in place, it needs to predict an additional translation to compensate for the induced motion. For example, in this animation, you can see that the network needs to predict a complex vector using the rotation coordinate if we want, just want to rotate the object in place. One simple way to disentangle rotation and translation is to do rotation in the frame of reference specified for the object model, as you can see here. However, if the model coordinate changes, the, predict, the prediction needs to be changed accordingly, since it becomes worse if we have two similar objects with different model frames, since we need to distinguish them. Like in the animation, the rectangle has a different model frame, and the required rotation vector for the same operation becomes completely different. To avoid this complication, we use the rotation coordinate centered in the center of the estimated post, while its axes are aligned with the camera frame. Using this frame, the rotation predicted will be consistent with rotation in the image space, and we do not require the network to memorize and recognize the model frame anymore. We use a similar reasoning for the translation in 3D. For brevity, I will not go into details here. In a nutshell, we use the ratio between the different scale of the object in the image to represent changes in distance. We use pixels in the image plane to match the XY translation. The key, property, the key property is, again, that individual dimensions corresponding to a simple image transformation and are independent of object size and actual distance. We did several experiments to validate our design on various data sets. The data set we use in the following few slides is line mode, which includes 15 objects and about 1,000 images for each object. The line mode data set is challenging because of its textureless small objects, complex background, and cluttered scene. When compared with other state-of-the-art methods using RGB-only images, we show great advantage over them. In this table, each row corresponding to a different evaluation metric, all related to post-estimation accuracy. The different columns give results for the prior work. We refine the poses from post CN and show that we can reduce more than 50% of error in all evaluation metrics against the best performed methods before. When compared with other state-of-the-art methods using RGBD images, we show that we get competitive results to them. We also show that our method is robust to different post-initializations. 
Other than poses from POSIN, we modified the fast RCN in a simple way and get a set of poses which are much worse than those from POSIN. But if we refine these poses using our method, we can get similar performance. Notice that the network weights and the settings in these two experiments are exactly the same. Then we did the comparison between the naive coordinate, model coordinate, and our coordinate. From the table, we can see that our coordinate has significantly advantage over the other two candidates. The ablation study on techniques about iterative, iterative training and testing proves that they are very helpful. Iterative training and testing improves the accuracy by 12.5% and 7.7% respectively over one single iteration. We also tested our method on the occluded LAM mode and dataset and the TLS dataset. Occluded LAM mode dataset contains more occlusions than the LAM mode dataset, and the TLS dataset contains objects which are textureless and symmetric. Here are two short videos to visualize our results on the occluded LAM mode dataset. The white line represents the contour of the ground truth process, and the red line and the green line draws the contour of the initial process and our refined process separately. We also tested our methods on unseen object models. During testing, we use models which are not included in the training set. We train our network using part of the models in airplane, car, and chair from ModelNet and tested the network on the remaining models in the same categories. We can see from the video that objects can be well matched. Furthermore, we tested our network on unseen object categories, which means the, op the, which means the models co categories we used for testing are not included in training. We train our network using models from eight categories from ModelNet and tested our network on another seven categories from ModelNet. Again, none of the categories used for testing is included during training. In conclusion, in this work, we proposed framework DeepIM, which is an iterative post refinement network using RGB images only, and a novel untangled SE3 representation for accurate post estimation. We make large improvement over previous RGB-based post estimation methods. We also show that our method is generalized to unseen objects and unseen categories. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lee, for a very interesting talk uh, and really great results. Uh, anyone has uh, questions in the audience? Uh, all right. So, so, so then I have a question. So your method is iterative, so it means it potentially can st get stuck in the local minima, right? Because it does small steps at a time. Yes. Could you comment on the robustness of that in real-world conditions, and also if you if accuracy would improve if you start initially if you initialize it in several places and try to go to to the best result? Uh, like robustness of the method to local minima. Can you repeat it again? Yeah, yeah. like you, you have an iterative method, right? So it does map steps, yeah. and then at some point it stops, I guess, because uh, you do fixed number of steps, or its accuracy doesn't increase, right? So, so how does it? Uh, how sensitive is it to local minima, or, or there are no local minima in this optimization? You, you mean whether the, my method will be drop into the local minima? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think it will be. Going to train to to build to a uh, local minima since the if if they if the, it becomes to a local minima they it, they also have a ha, have a loss to, from the, have a gradient from the local minima to the to the best process yeah yeah, yeah so, but, but one way to deal with this would be restart multiple times like yeah. from different initializations but yeah. in, in this data set you you. It doesn't happen, or you didn't observe improvement, or what is your comment about it? Uh, I use I use different initialization process. Yeah, there there are many for, during training. I use uh, about ten initialization process for a single image, okay. so that there will, the a single image will be refined from to, ten different process, and uh. the, and in this way it is very hard to drop into the local oh, right, minimum. Right. Yeah. Th thank you very much. Thank you. Right, let's thank the speaker.